Would you say you lead a moral life? Is there an ethical code you always stick to, a creed that you know off by heart? If so, then prepare for your moral certainty to be shattered by the Forgotten City, the indie game that has taken critics by storm. Originally a Skyrim mod set in a Dwemer ruin, the developers reworked the concept into a standalone story. In the Forgotten City, you travel 2,000 years into the past to relive the final days of a cursed Roman settlement. The inhabitants live in fear of a maxim known as the Golden Rule, which holds that if one person sins, everyone dies. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. It's your job to save the city's two dozen inhabitants. You need to find the person or persons who will break the golden rule and stop them before it's too late. This would be a challenging task for any detective, but you're fortunately aided by a time loop, which enables you to relive the day again each time the golden rule is broken. Armed with knowledge from the day just gone, you can manipulate events to your advantage. The man who commits suicide at the beginning, oh, Pierce, no! you can talk him down by preemptively solving his debt issues, allowing you to attain the information you need. The Forgotten City rewards lateral thinking. It's up to you to exploit the time loop to the best of your abilities. At one point, I needed life-saving medicine. The merchant, however, demanded an extortionate fee, so I stole his cash, reset the day, and paid for it using his own money. Reliving the same day might sound tedious, but repetition is effectively minimised. When you respawn, you can send an NPC to perform tasks you'd already accomplished on previous days. You also retain your inventory, so you can pick up right where you left off. You can have a lot of fun with the time loop mechanic, but where the forgotten city shines is in its writing. The depiction of human nature is spot on. Behind every NPC is a web of motivations. Many games struggle to make conversation engaging, but I found myself drawn to the forgotten city's characters. I wanted to learn why they acted in the way that they did. Why trick another into debt bondage? Why overcharge for life-saving medicine? Why cheat? in an election. As is almost always the case among wrongdoers, those who commit immoral acts in the Forgotten City find ways of justifying it to themselves, rationalising it in such a way that they are guiltless. Debt bondage is only ever the fault of the fool who never read the contract fully. Charging more for medicine when demand is high is the way the market works. Cheating in an election is justifiable if it's for the greater good of the city. What the Forgotten City essentialises is perhaps the ugliest facet of the human condition, selfishness, and a concomitant willingness to bend the rules to suit our own ends. Despite the strict enforcement of the Golden Rule, the Forgotten City is no utopia. Whilst exactly what constitutes a sin under the rule is unclear, the moniker Golden Rule is an important clue. The Golden Rule forms the cornerstone of morality for most people. It has been articulated by various civilizations and religions throughout history. In the West, it is probably best known in the biblical formation as do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And yet, when this dictum is literally enforced, we bear witness to multiple people bending, breaking, or otherwise violating it in spirit. The rule itself is also questionable. It isn't always necessarily moral to treat others as you yourself would like to be treated. Doing bad deeds can sometimes have good consequences. For instance, in the course of the investigation, you will need to break the golden rule to attain clues that will, in the long run, help you to save the city. The game strikes a great balance between raising important themes, such as the debate about objective morality, and not making the player feel as if they're being clobbered on the head with a philosophy textbook. One of the deepest conversations I had with a hermit philosopher is a great example. What is discussed is fundamental philosophy, basic questions about our existence that are relevant to everyone. If there is one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them and evil people will always find a way around them. Moments that provoke introspection are interspersed with humour, puzzles, and combat to lighten the mood. Combat, though, is where the game is weakest. There is one rather extended combat section which feels drawn out. Whilst the golden bow is innovative, allowing you to vanquish enemies by turning them to gold, the novelty quickly wears off as the combat experience boils down to either sniping or kicking enemies away. But it hardly detracts from the overall experience, and it does provide an important intermission, 
even if it's not particularly well executed. Like most indie games, The Forgotten City is also riddled with bugs, but none of them are game breaking. Examples include dodgy facial animations or an NPC punching the air instead of the opponent they want to fight. At worst, these bugs simply distract you briefly from the otherwise compelling narrative. They're a minor blemish on an otherwise great experience. The calibre of a game is best measured by how you feel immediately after finishing it. The Forgotten City had me pensive, sitting, staring out the window for a solid half an hour. I reflected on the characters I'd encountered, the fates they met, and the choices I had made. There are four endings to The Forgotten City. I wondered whether the ending I'd achieved was necessarily the best, and I was ultimately left more confused about morality than I'd been at the beginning, but I think that's ultimately a good thing. The more critical we are about the moral systems we subscribe to and the rules that we follow, the better. The only thing I can be certain about is that The Forgotten City is a game that will not be forgotten anytime soon.